Hello, in this video we will look at a mutexis which is a construct used to solve the critical section problem. So, we will start with where we stopped off in the last video with spin locks. Essentially the main characteristic of spin locks is that it uses busy weighting. That is uh, we had seen that in order to, uh, to have a lock uh, there was a while loop and in that while loop the exchange instruction was continuously invoked and the while loop would only exit when the exchange instruction returned a 0. So, this busy weighting is not ideally what is required. Essentially busy weighting causes uh, the CPU cycle to be wasted leading to uh, maybe things like performance degradation as well as huge wastage of memory. So, where would we actually use spin locks? Spin locks are useful when we have short critical sections and we know that we do not have to waste too much time in waiting. So, for instance, if we just want to increment a shared counter, then we could uh, possibly use a spin lock or another thing is to access an array element, then a spin lock would be preferred. Uh, essentially these things uh, we assume would will not have too much of overheads. Therefore, even if another process is uh, accessing the counter, we are certain that the process is not going to spend too much time incrementing the counter. Therefore, the waiting process will, do, will not have to waste too many cycles waiting to enter into the critical section. However, spin locks are not useful when the period of waiting is unpredictable or it will take a very long time. For instance, uh, if there is a page fault and resulting in a page of memory which is loaded from the hard disk into the main memory. So, this would take a considerably long time and you do not want your process to be actually wasting CPU cycles during this entire operation. In such a case, we use a, a different construct called a mutex. This over here shows how typically the mutex is implemented. So, it again relies considerably on the exchange instruction which is used and just like the spin lock, we have the lock and unlock and a, a memory location which is shared between all processes. Now, in order to obtain the critical section, a process would need to invoke a lock and in this lock function, we have a while loop. So, as in the spin lock case, uh, the exchange instruction is invoked in the while loop and uh, this instruction would either return a value of 0 or something not equal to 0, typically 1. So, if the value is equal to 0, then we break from this loop and that process would then ha have acquired the lock and execute in the critical section. However, if the exchange returns a value which is not 0, then we go into this else part and execute this function called sleep. Now, the sleep function would cause the process to go from the running state into the block state. Essentially, the process is waiting for a particular operation to arrive. So, until this operation arrives, th the process will not, not get any CPU time. Now, this event which the sleep is waiting for is the wake up event. So, when an other process invokes wake up, it will result in the sleeping process to be woken up from the block state and put onto the ready queue. Now, if it is lucky, when it executes the exchange instruction again, it would get 0 and it, it would get into the critical section. On the other hand, if it is unlucky, it would execute the in ex exchange instruction and get something which is non-zero and it would go back to sleep and it would continue to sleep until woken up by another process. 
So essentially we see over here that instead of doing a busy weighting as was done in spin locks, in mutexes we put the entire process into a sleep state. The process will continue to be in a sleep state until it is woken up and when it is woken up it is going to try the lock again and if it achieves the lock then it enters into the critical section. So one issue with mutex is what is known as a thundering herd problem. So the thundering herd problem uh, occurs when we have large number of processes. So each of these processes let us assume is using the same critical section and invokes the lock in order to enter into the critical section and at the end of the critical section would invoke unlock which would then wake up another process waiting for the sec critical section. So it could happen if we have large number of processes that there are several processes present in the sleep mode while one process enters into the critical section. So when that process executes unlock, it invokes wake up. This results in all the process which are sleeping to be woken up. So all these processes would then go from the block state into the ready queue and the scheduler would then uh, sequentially execute each of these processes. So each process is then going to uh, go continue its while loop and execute the exchange function. So out of all these processes because of the atomic nature of the exchange instruction only one process would acquire the lock and all other processes would go back into sleep state. So this continues every time. So every time whenever an unlock is invoked by a process just completing its critical section it will invoke wake up and it will result in all processes waiting on that mutex to be woken up and all except one would go back to sleep. There would be exactly one process which would gain the lock and enter into the critical section. So as a result of this what we see that whenever there is a wake up invoked uh, there would result in several contexts which is occurring in order that all the processes execute and check the exchange instruction again. Now by the way exchange is implemented in the hardware all processes except one will enter in the, into the critical section. So the issue over here and why it is called a thundering herd problem is every time there is a wake up there is a huge avalanche of context switching that occurs because a large process, large number of processes are entering into the ready queue and this could lead to starvation. So one solution to the thundering herd problem is to modify the way mutexes are implemented by incorporating queues. In this implementation of a mutex whenever the lock is invoked and the exchange instruction uh, returns something which is non-zero the process gets added into a queue and then goes to sleep. Now when the when a process invokes unlock the sleeping process is removed from the queue and a wake up specifically for only that process is invoked. So unlike the previous cases where all processes are woken up in this case there is exactly one process which is woken up. So this, proce uh, this process P which is specified here would wake up from sleep and since it is the only process which has woken up so it would typically go into this uh, while loop check the exchange and most likely it would get the lock and execute the critical section. Si similarly when it unlocks it would pick out the next process which is waiting in the queue and it will wake up only that process. Now this second process would then enter into the critical section. So when we are talking about synchronization primitives such as uh, spin locks and mutexes it is important to also consider the case when a priority based scheduling algorithm is used in the operating system. So let us consider this particular scenario. So let us say we have a high priority task and a low priority task which share the same data and have uh, a critical section. Now let us say that 
the low priority task is executing in the critical section and at this particular time the high priority task requests for, for the lock in order to enter into the critical section. So, the scenario we are facing here is that the low priority task is executing in the critical section while during this time the high priority task invokes something like a lock and wants to enter into the critical section. Now, the dilemma we are facing here is that we have a high priority task which is waiting for a low priority task to complete. So, this is known as the priority inversion problem essentially we have something uh, important a task which is important and given a high priority and it is waiting for a lower priority task to complete its execution. And if you look at this particular link present here you will uh, see quite an interesting case where such a priority inversion problem had occurred essentially with the pathfinder. So, one possible solution for the priority inversion problem is known as the priority inheritance. So, essentially in this uh, solution whenever a low priority task is executing in the critical section and a high priority task requests for that critical section what happens is that the low priority task is escalated to a high priority. Essentially the priority of the low priority task becomes equal to that of the high priority task. The low priority task then would execute with this high priority until it releases the uh, sec critical section. So, this would ensure that the high priority task would execute relatively quickly. Thank you.